with another video and we have a special guest today emily hey guys and we are doing Ooh. a study abroad inspired video so we have both studied abroad i studied abroad in croatia and i studied abroad in leeds in the uk and we have some questions that we would like to answer and help you guys out in case you are studying abroad because it's a rough guy. <laughs> yeah. Before, before, not during, but it's a little nerve wracking, like we know. So if you're watching this, hopefully you're studying abroad. If not, thank you for watching anyway. <laughs> but you can learn something new. Yeah, we're, we're some good yeah. advice. We're here for some tips and tricks. So first, we're going to go over some questions, and then some of our personal study abroad tips. So Emily, first question <laughs> goes to you. Right in. <laughs> is what would you recommend for packing? That's that was a rough. hard one. That's yeah. Hard. I think definitely for like suitcase, um, suitcases, I made the mistake of bringing like two really big suitcases and I should have done just like one major suitcase and then a carry on because you travel a lot when you're out there because obviously you're going to take the opportunity to travel and I had to just like carry a backpack for like my weekend trips and if I had like a carry on. That would have been like super easy. I think that's what you did. You did like a big guy. And a yeah. Guy. My advice for that, I guess it depends on the type of person you are. I am a yeah. big shopper. So I bought a lot there and it was a struggle to bring it back. Oh, yeah. So my recommendation for that is to have definitely a carry on because that's what I brought to all of my smaller trips. Mm -hmm. And then do two big suitcases just for traveling like to your country and then back. Yeah, and I thought I would be able to fit a lot more, even in my big suitcase. And mm -hmm. I put it all in there, and I was like, "That's an issue." Oh and a lot of the stuff, like the products, because I stock up on a bunch of products that I have mm -hmm. here to bring, and like eighty percent of them they had there. Yeah, I was gonna say I think the majority of like what actually was in my suitcase were like clothes and shoes. As far as like products, I waited to buy out there because, like you said, you can basically get like all the products. Like over there as you can here yeah so that's like my l was bringing products and stuff because a lot yeah. of them i had so don't do that unless it's like medications or something but yeah or like something that is like very specific yeah but i would definitely bring medication because especially if you're not in a um english speaking country <laughs> i didn't know what anything was so i'm like yeah. ibuprofen like where is that so yeah even like in england it was like there's no like ibuprofen i mean there is ibuprofen but not it's like labeled different and it's just like different over there yeah. so medication i would bring because that really like stressed me out yeah even if it's over the counter mm -hmm, definitely all right question two how were your classes and were they different than your classes in the united states yes <laughs> do you want to go first okay i hate like Croatian way of school. I think it's just Europe in general. Yeah, I think ours were same, the same. So it's like you have your classes, but for us, we had two tests that made up your entire grade. Mm -hmm. Or you had the option if you didn't pass those two tests, then it's one like cumulative test. And if you pass the test, you pass the class. If you don't pass the test, you don't pass the class. A lot of pressure. <laughs> Yeah, and so they let you do like multiple tries on the exams, but some of the tries were in the next semester. Does that make sense? Yeah, like when you've already left, so you can't. Yeah, so that doesn't really help you. And at my school, they wouldn't let you like take the exam at home, like your home university. Mm -hmm. So there was not homework, which is super nice because you can just go off and like gallivant mm -hmm. and attendance didn't really matter. Oh, it's like not mandatory. Attendance is not mandatory. So... Yeah, but then you kind of screw yourself over. Yeah. <laughs> but also in my classes, I couldn't even understand really what they were saying, so. Yeah, that was different for you. Um, yeah, mine were basically set up the same way where you had, we just had like one test or one big paper at the end of the semester. And it was nice because like one of my classes, each week you had a different topic and the major paper at the end, you just had to write about one of those topics. So I literally went to like one week of class and used that topic for my paper and I passed. So, I mean, 
I think my classes were definitely easier than Chloe's because <laughs> we spoke English and it's just different in Croatia. Yeah. But um, I really like didn't feel like I learned, but also I wasn't really like over there to study. Um, but it's definitely different from here. Yeah, like for crazy sure, different. Yeah, for sure. It's just weird. Like during the semester, it's a lot less stressful, but then when you have to take the tests, it's very stressful. Yeah. It's just like a lot but, of pressure. Yeah. And I would just take, because I did actual business courses. What did you do? I did one business course and then like electives. Do electives. Yeah. I had this class. It was called Traditional Alcoholic Beverages. And we learned how to brew beer. Oh, I it remember like you told fun. me that. It was fun. And yeah. obviously, like, passed the class. Here but... I am taking fucking analysis of financial <laughs> statements. Don't do that. Don't Take do that. Class. Don't do that. <laughs> Learn about alcohol, not about financial statements. Okay? You heard it here <laughs> first. Don't do that. Tip number one. Don't do that. <laughs> Tip number two. Don't go to class. Yeah, Just exactly. kidding. Go to class. <laughs> yeah. You have to pass. Yeah. Yeah. Pass. That's the big thing is pass. Like, make sure you pass your classes. Because if not, I mean, for us, our study abroad transferred over is pass or fail. Mm -hmm. So as long as you pass, like, you're you're cooling. Yeah. But, yeah, so just pass, like, and you're chilling. Definitely, definitely. So, next question is, how was your accommodation and would you change it? So accommodation as in your living situation. Um, I lived in a dorm off of campus. It was, like, a 15-minute walk to, like, the actual campus. Um, I would not change it because that's how I met, like, my really good, uh, British friends. And it, like, definitely forces you to socialize because I was living with, like, four other people and we have, like, a shared kitchen and common room. Um, and so that's how I mainly met, like, my really good, like, close group of friends. Only thing that sucked is walking to class every day because there was this, like, huge hill I had to walk up to the class. <laughs> And when it's like Two below degrees. 32 degrees, it's pretty rough. That ain't it. Pretty rough. That's also why I skip class a lot because mm. I don't do well in the cold. Like I'm not going out there. I can't do it. I yeah. can't do it. Exactly. Oh exactly. Um, so I lived in an apartment, but it was a long-term Airbnb. So if you are going to do like something not associated with your school dorm or something like that, I would definitely do through Airbnb because it's technically just like an apartment but the payment is secured through the site mm -hmm. so you know you're not getting scammed because honestly like in a foreign country you don't know especially like, non-english speaking people. yeah and if you go there like they could have a picture of an apartment or something and you put like a thousand dollar down payment or whatever and you go and it's like if it's not there or something like that so i definitely do it through airbnb or like a reputable site for sure because mm -hmm. if not you're gonna fuck yourself over mm -hmm. but um I like my living situation I'm not a fan of like dorms or or like living with people I don't know so yeah that, I took a risk with that one but. yeah that kind of that like even here I would never do that in my like where I live now um where I like my home university I would never do the dorms because I'm just so scared of like moving in with someone that's horrible but also in Croatia the dorm situation was shitty it was like super small rooms like the biggest was a super small room that you still shared with someone and she had her Ooh. own room and her own bath yeah bathroom. my own bathroom so it, it's different but if it was like that situation maybe but my, our school like the accommodation was not very good so yeah and it also like a weird thing like obviously here with your dorms and situations um it's like girls and boys but i like we had like co-ed, so I lived with like two guys and two girls. So that was a little scary because I was like living with guys like that you don't know from a different country. But I got lucky and got like a good group of people. Yeah. So you're you're chilling, you're chilling. Yeah. And I would never do like a host family either. No. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Because I actually like have heard some wild horror stories about host families and personally it's not worth the risk. Yeah. Okay, um, so how is transportation and how did you figure out how to use it? So our transportation was pretty much Uber or um, the tram, but the tram ran through most of the city. There's also buses, but I never took the bus. I just mainly did the tram. And how I learned it was, so my landlord for my apartment, 
um, lived upstairs from me. So she gave me like a map for the tram, but I still really didn't know how to use it. And then um, at school, the study abroad people did help us with that and they helped us get like our tram pass, but you had to go to the transportation building like within the city and get pay for a monthly pass. And that was scary because some of them didn't speak English and I was like, I need a month student pass, like please help. But I just handed them the paperwork and they like knew what to do with it, thank God. And the cool thing was for us on Google Maps, all the tram routes mm -hmm. were there. So I just, it was scary at first, honestly, but like if you just watch the Google Maps and if you are in another country and obviously the stops are in that language, mm -hmm. they're not gonna be in English. Um, just look at your Google Maps and pay attention and it will move as you move. So you'll like know, oh, I need to get off here. And then after like a couple of weeks, I had the tram numbers and the stops memorized. Mm -hmm. So I like knew how to get to the school, how to get to the city all that stuff so it really like wasn't bad I actually kind of liked like the public transport yeah, except yeah. when it was cold and like having to wait outside and stuff. yeah yeah how was your transport um well we kind of just like got thrown into it because um on my way out there like our flights got canceled huge mess anyways we ended up in London and then we had to take like a train from London to Leeds um and it was like rush hour <laughs> you just like ask people like what to do like never been on a train before um but everyone's like super helpful um but actually in Leeds um you walked <laughs> everywhere or we had like a bus um which I feel like it's just like any other city like yeah how buses work you get passes you can pay like per ride um or uber so it was pretty straightforward, um, and it's not as difficult as it seems. But I definitely, like, towards the end of, like, my study abroad, I missed having a car so much. Like, at least for me in Croatia, like, you know how, for the most part here, if you're walking, you walk on the right side, and, like, people who are coming this way walk on the left. They do not do that. So people are in your way, no one moves. And that was the thing about Croatia is like, no one had fucking manners. Mm -hmm. It's like, they will get in their way, they'll push you, like they literally don't care. And that was something that really frustrated me because yeah. I'm like, can you just move? Like, oh my God. Get out the way. Or if you're looking at something, they'll just like get in front of you. And I'm like. And like not being there before, like, it's like you want to take your time. You're kind of like already yeah. stressed out and on edge. and. That doesn't help. Also, my groceries were in another language. <laughs> so obviously, I, t I was like, is this butter? Is this cream cheese? I don't know. So I obviously, when I first went, after a while, I like knew what I liked and what brands and stuff. But like the first month, I didn't know what was what. Because if you really think about it, like a lot of things do look the same. Yeah, obviously. Like you can't tell her like flavors of chips or something. It's like, what is this? Mm -hmm. But yeah. even like going to England, there's certain things that have different names. Like... A pickle is called a gherkin. It's like, and this is English, you know, so just everywhere is really going to be like different. different. Yeah. That's the thing is you have to go into it expecting cultural differences because if you go into it and you're like, it's going to be exactly how the United States is or wherever you are, or if you're elsewhere coming into the United States, mm -mm. it's going to be different. And that's just how it is. And like, especially some people there, they're used to it and you're going into their culture. culture so like what you're doing is probably rude. Yeah, do research. That yeah, like norms and for shit. sure do research on like cultural norms because a lot of the times like what we think is respectful is actually disrespectful to them. Yeah. I can't think of an example, but yeah, just like something that like you do, mm -hmm. um, but or something we think is rude is like normal for them. So mm -hmm. just one of those things where you have to not let yourself like get super annoyed or frustrated with because it's just like how it is. And I think after like the first month, I would say you adjust oh, for sure. to like their norms and their, their culture and how they do things. You just kind of adjust and you just get used to it and it doesn't really bother you anymore. Mm -hmm. So at first it's like annoying, but you'll still be fine. You'll be fine. Um, oh, this is not related really to you, but um, how did you navigate a non-English speaking country? So you just do, I guess. <laughs> Um, you live and you learn. <laughs> actually, a lot of people did speak English, um, but there was very thick accents, which like was a problem in my school because um, they did offer English talk courses, which was good. But a lot of times I couldn't understand what they were saying, um, or things like grocery store reading signs, stuff like that. A lot of it was in Croatian, obviously, because that's 
your like native tongue so mm -hmm. duh um but it was good like most people really did speak english or they could help you in some capacity or they knew some english um and if they didn't a lot of the times they would just like speak back in croatian and you would just be like thank you and just walk away i mean it's a little like <laughs> or if someone or a lot of times i would have people come up to me and just spew out Croatian and at first this like really 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 stressed me out because I was like oh my god I'm gonna be so rude but you literally all you have to say is just I'm sorry I just speak English and they either will most of the time respond in English or they're just like okay okay Hi. like they're super nice but I've never had I never had anyone be rude to me because I didn't speak Croatian mm -hmm. like everyone was really nice about it or was had some sort of English that they could like talk to you with but yeah. or and if you do go somewhere that's a different um, language definitely learn like thank you and hello and just normal things like that mm -hmm. in the language just so that you can like generally speak mm -hmm. if needed yeah you said it. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> um what she said. is there anything that you would do differently oh gosh mm -hmm. i think you know like when you're out there I mean, it's just, like, it's just going to happen. You're going to have, like, good and, like, bad parts. Um, I think, like, one thing, I'm, like, it is just, like, a personal thing. I'm very, like, future-oriented in, like, how I think. And so I feel like towards, like, the middle, middle and end of my study abroad, I was kind of, like, not really, like, living in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just kind of like, oh, I missed, like, back home and I kind of want to do this or I want to do that and I think like for me I just really it's not like a huge regret but I wish I was like more like present but I mean it's not like it ruined my trip or anything and I, I was living in the moment for like the good parts so, yeah. <laughs> yeah that is a good uh, like a good yeah. thing it's just because when I was there I was just like wow like this is gonna be over and I would just really try to like like enjoy it like while I was in it because personally I didn't get homesick at all like I obviously missed mm -hmm. my friends and my family but there was not one point when I was like I just missed New Mexico no I did no 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 no, no. <laughs> so no <laughs> did I, you really well I definitely miss like friends and family right and it was just like some small things like restaurants like beyonds <laughs> and i really miss like having a car and right, just yeah. even like laundry it's like i had to pay to do my laundry oh and like not having a dryer not having a dryer having it it's like so humid or there's so much moisture in the air that like things don't dry so it's like all those like little things it's just kind of like inconveniences um and i, I think it's just because we grew up like differently and it's not necessarily bad or good but some of those things were just really like hard to get used to and so I think that yeah. like pushed me to get like more homesick and yeah I think even some of those stuff like not having a dryer like towards the end like the car at first I got used to it and then at the end I was like oh I'm my ready. god no. like I cannot do this anymore mm -hmm. which is stupid it's like a freaking dryer dude but it is it like you. when you get like things that you're so used to and accustomed to taken away from you and before I went I wasn't like oh my god I'm not gonna have a dryer like you don't no. think about those things mm -hmm. so when you're there it's like oh wow I really have to hang dry all of this and nothing dries and plan accordingly yeah yeah so that was kind of rough I think I would change my classes that I took because that was just like too much funny. yeah and only one of them transferred over as an actual like credit for a class um, like, like took a class the other ones were just electives so that's kind of rough skis but yeah I don't know I traveled a lot I like mm -hmm. I don't really have any big boy regrets like I'm yeah. glad where I went I went where I went mm -hmm. that's really good yeah I think we both had pretty good experiences yeah um did it take you off your degree path studying abroad um not really surprisingly so i think it also depends on like what your degree is because mm -hmm. so like at least like with u and um you're allowed to take like one online class at u and um and so i did that so i for sure had like one class that was counting towards my degree 
and I didn't really take a lot of electives before I went and so all my credits transferred back as electives and it was kind of nice because credit hours are different in Europe and so transferring back I got like 25 credit hours for one semester and so that actually I feel like it actually like helped me and worked yeah. in my favor um but that was just like mine yeah and she graduated early she just yeah. graduated yay so yeah she's coming with even when studying abroad yeah, yeah. me yeah work. You just have to do it, guys. Just do it. Full send. Full send it. <laughs> um, no, it did not take me off my degree path. I'm graduating this semester. Um, when I was there, I took two online classes. I don't know why they let me do that, but they did. I think um, I think you have to pay extra if you do more than yeah. one. I think it was like a $30 charge, though. Because originally, yeah. when she went, we thought it was like $300. But I talked to them, and it was like $30 charge. But So I did two online classes one class that actually transferred over as a class replacement and then i needed two electives so just worked out that was like a full class load so yeah mm -hmm. we're doing great we're thriving and where was your favorite place that you traveled oh well kind of a lot of places yeah just tell the people where you went um okay i'll try to be quick so obviously <laughs> the uk so that includes I only was in England and Scotland in the UK. Um, I went to Ireland, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, and Greece. Um, as far as like top three favorite cities, Paris, Rome, and Venice. Because Italy was just like unreal. Like, it was Italy killed it. Mm -hmm. So what were yours? Um, so I went to Croatia obviously I stay I lived in Zagreb which is the city part but I traveled all around the coast so we went to like a bunch of different islands someone just sent me a tinder message what up <laughs> we're both all looking at the notification <laughs> what did you say <laughs> anyways okay so um yeah so I went to a bunch of different islands along the coast I um, went to like Dubrovnik all those super um popular places in Croatia and then I went to Slovenia, Milan, Prague, Budapest twice, Mykonos, Paris. Am I missing somewhere? You said Milan, right? Yeah. I don't know. I was just traveling like a majority of my time. Yeah. Like I, there was like a couple weekends where I wasn't traveling. Basically, that's like the speed of that but my favorites were Mykonos and Prague shit slapped Woohoo! so now we have just some tips this is the biggest thing I feel like of all study abroad go to the events I don't yeah. care I don't care if you're shy I don't care if you're fucking weird I don't care go to the study abroad events because you're not going to make friends if yeah. you don't go to these because yeah. no one has friends at these events everyone is looking for friends everyone is in the same exact place as you yeah. and are wanting to meet people and so right. go. And, yeah and i feel like that first one is the most important no for sure because everyone starts creating clicks at I, at that first thing mm -hmm. i found my click the first study abroad thing yeah because since i didn't live in a flat I didn't have like a group mm -hmm. of people that I was living with. Well, and even with that, it's like I had like my flat um, group, and then I had a study abroad a group, study abroad group, and it's like like these people live in England, and so it's beneficial because they can like show you around. But then the study abroad people are like wanting to travel, do things, and it's like like Chloe said, like you're all in the exact same place, yeah. and so you yeah. just have to meet everyone and anyone and it's like either way like even though everyone's from different countries like groups and stuff still form which is oh, interesting yeah. it's interesting that that aspect is still the same social aspect is still the same yeah and most people are super nice that are studying abroad because mm -hmm. everyone like has no fucking friends like yeah. everyone's alone everyone's everyone's freaked out everyone is in a foreign country everyone doesn't speak the same language um but another thing is almost well everyone spoke english that was yeah. study abroad well like nowadays i feel like the younger generation like it's just i mean obviously english is the universal language um 
And so most people know English, and especially if you're studying abroad, like, yeah. you know English. Yeah. So don't be scared to go up to people. Just say, like, where are you from? What are you studying? It's, like, super easy opener questions. Yeah. And um, talk to people in your classes. Mm -hmm. When you sit down, talk to the person next to you. Yeah. And then they're going to introduce you to their friends. And then those are people that you're going to, people who are also going to want to travel mm -hmm. and stuff like that because they also are in a foreign country. So they want to see what you want to see. And it just makes for really good friendships. Yeah. But if you do not make friends, your experience it's is going to be horrible. I'm sorry. It is. Facts. Because you're by yourself and that's not fun if you don't have any friends and you're homesick and you miss your mom, it's not going to be good. So make that. Who are you crying yeah. to? Yeah yourself you're, you're gonna cry by yourself in your small room yeah by yourself by yourself <laughs> but, okay we're making this sound so bad but it is actually super easy to make friends oh yeah like even like the so weird kids were out here making friends <laughs> and like yeah if we can do it you can do it like it's we super, believe in you you got it but yeah it's really not that hard and then they introduce you to their friends if they already made friends so mm -hmm. and then another thing it's just like classes first day start talking to people because you know it's awkward if you're like in the third week and you're just like hey like it's weird it's just like american like school it. like i'm not I, i've never talked to someone unless it was like a partner or something like mm -hmm. sat next to someone and just started talking to them like halfway through the semester yeah that's no it's like from day one so make that a priority make friends at that study abroad event, look your best, feel good, look good, and make do your friends. Thing. Do your thing, boo, and make your friends because it will make or break the experience. I wish I was I joking, but I'm not. We know Take from it from experience. the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so do that. Make friends. You'll thank us later, I promise. Um, travel, our next tip is to travel as much as you can. Like, I traveled a shit ton, and I still feel like it wasn't enough. Same, same. Also, um, we both studied abroad in the spring semester because you can travel after the semester is over for that whole summer, um, which is a huge thing. And you get, like, I don't know if it was for you, but um, we had Easter break in the middle of the semester for a whole month. And, like, I just traveled for, like, three weeks straight. But really quick, one thing with travel as much as you can is quality over quantity. <laughs> because one mistake that I kind of made was I traveled a lot of places, but only for a couple days at each place. And I kind of wish I had like, because you kind of get burnt out if you're like on the road. And like for my three week trip, by the end of it, I got like this awful sickness. Um, so it's like if I had stayed like in each place for longer amounts of time it wouldn't be as like difficult on my body and I could have like seen more and kind of enjoyed it more but still like like technically no regrets because everything was like amazing yeah that's something I'm really glad about how we traveled was it was <laughs> for like pretty good amounts of time like by the yeah. time that we left I had pretty much seen like most tourist spots mm -hmm. so I saw like slightly less than Emily did but I really Especially enjoyed the time and I wasn't like exhausted. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about study abroad is a lot of times like if you go on a vacation for 10 days, it's like you only have those 10 days. When you're studying abroad, you have five months yeah. to plan and mm -hmm. to travel. And traveling it's within Europe, if you're in your, I don't know where you are, but if you're in Europe, it's so much less inexpensive to travel. Like bus, Train. take the bus, buses, flicks, bus, you <laughs> are the one bro. Or Full Sun Ryanair. Or Ryanair. Because those th Ryanair's flights, Flix bus is obviously a bus, um, crazy cheap. cheap. Like, I went to Milan on, by bus for, like, $30. That's Airbnbs, good. split it with your friends. It's actually super inexpensive, mm -hmm. but you just have to plan, yeah, plan accordingly. Yeah. And, yeah, just make sure you're there. Like, see, plan before, see what you want to see and how long you think that will take and kind of gauge your days mm -hmm. like don't just go and be like oh what do we want to see like plan this is still like mm -hmm. i'm we're all for a spontaneous trip mm -hmm. but still kind of have like what you want to see because you don't want to be bummed out if you like, don't see something yeah and also like worst case scenario if you like full send a random place um hostels oh as like have you ever seen that horror movie hostel have you don't listen to this bitch <laughs> I mean, I only did I'm a hostel kidding. with other people, but if I was, like, alone... No, I've actually heard hostels are pretty good, but I'm just... I, like, get weird 
about staying places i'm one of those people that's just weird about it but especially yeah, for guys be careful i feel like boys don't care mm -hmm. they just like will still sleep in the fucking road yeah with the homeless people yeah, they'll be like, mm, it's free, but I don't do that. But yeah, definitely plan your travel, see where you want to go, like even start planning where you want to go before, mm -hmm. like you even leave to your new country. Yeah. But because that's like the time, that was like the best memory. And like to think that we were that young and got to go to all of those places is crazy yeah. with like your friends. Best like experience and decision like I've ever made, honestly. Yeah, same thing. Well, guys, you do not know how many attractive people, I'm going to be honest, I would never cheat on a significant other. I went to study abroad single, rip. But <laughs> that's a whole other story. <laughs> but good thing I did, I am glad I did. I am glad yeah. Yeah. because there are so many hot guys and so many pretty girls. Europeans are- Fire. They have something else over there. I don't know what water they're drinking, but it's something because it's they're magical. all fucking hot. They're all hot. And so. the style, Woo -hoo. we could go on, we could go on. Yeah, do we, we need a whole other vlog about how hot <laughs> Europeans are. Yeah. The next tip is to go out of your comfort zone with caution. caution. Okay. We're not saying go 